Hello and welcome to another episode of Tepo Republic. On the last episode, we finally ambushed the second of the two Yonago armies that had been invading Umi. Takahita's army engaged them in a close and bloody battle on a misty morning and managed to eradicate them with superior use of artillery and cavalry, despite the enemy's fire rocket advantage, which they made good use of. Then the Edo forces attacked in North Shinano but were ambushed before they reached the castle. The ambush teamed up the forces of Tananao and Kodama into one army that roundly destroyed the Edo force with its massive artillery advantage and an impenetrable firing line that the enemy just couldn't get around. Then we finally got the opportunity to move out of North Shinano, beginning an offensive against Shogunate forces for the first time in this area in absolutely ages. The Sado forces landed forces in Echu and ran towards Hida, that's going to be something for Takamiji to deal with in the near future. Takayuki then attacked the Takasuki clan in Haruma, trying to end the feud between our warring families. We attacked the castle, we had only a small advantage but we utilised artillery and snipers to completely eradicate the enemy force before we actually made our attack, so in the end it was a completely one-sided assault. Now let's continue. There are certain issues that rise above our own present disagreements, and the issue of Sioux is the foremost of these. I know only a little of what has happened since the revolution. The Sioux have kept me confined in my palace for reasons they refuse to state. But I do know from the reports my men have managed to get to me that your vassals have met with no success against the Sioux armies. Regrettably, I believe my own forces have nothing better to report either. I'm sure you are fully aware that the Sioux doctrines are at odds with all Japanese traditions, decrying both your rule and mine. It is not without thought that I say the Sioux may live to see their wishes fulfilled, see both of us in chains and our people at their mercy. There is no sane man or god who wishes this to occur, but it falls to the men of great influence such as ourselves to be the drivers of reason. My proposition is simple that our domains be considered both independent from each other and at peace. I shall rule in the west, you in the east, as the natural order of this war has suggested is heaven's will. Then, from both sides, we shall strive to jointly end the rule of Sioux in the center. All lands claimed shall be the rightful property of the party who contributes the most to the victory. In fact, I would go so far as to make the following statement. If you and your men can defeat the Sioux without significant aid from my own forces, then I shall formally recognize you as the true ruler of Japan and restore the power of the Shogunate in the eyes of heaven. Know that this offer is not made lightly and is a token of my seriousness in this new joint endeavor. Entrust your reply to the bearer of this message. I shall await your cordial response. We're looking at the battle results from Takamichi's attack on Harima province, and they're pretty damn good. Just over 100 casualties, many of which were friendly fire apparently, and uh, thousands of enemy casualties. The castle taken, not entirely intact of course, because we destroyed it with our artillery so much, so we are going to have to spend a fair bit of money getting it back up to snuff. But still, a good enough place to capture, especially because there are no enemy armies in the area. It looks like we've got some time to set up more defences before enemy forces arrive to attempt to retake it. The Takasuki can only attack from the south now which is a bit awkward they have these forces down here which can attack either Harima or Setsu so in some ways this is a dangerous place to defend. I also noticed that Tarima has this daily news headquarters which is spreading pro-emperor views around the area and into the neighboring provinces so we're going to be rid of that destroying it quickly. We're also going to build a railway station because this will connect Harima to Uwari so I can bring up new armies straight into Harima if the action gets a little bit tough over there so that's excellent news. Over on the east side, I'm moving up a reserve army to join with General Tananao, who you can see is currently sitting on the road leading out of North Chinano. He needs to regenerate some troops before he can be really effective. But the plan with him is to move south into Kai. I don't know what the Sumpu have there, but I'm willing to bet that the combined forces of Tananao and the reserve army can beat whatever it is and capture the province. You can also see the Nagoka have moved up a single regiment, which is now hanging around in North Chinano. It's actually their daimyo. 
Uh, because Kodama is standing right by, I've got an opportunity to take him out. The plan for Kodama in general is to hang around North Shinano. First, we're going to wipe out this Daimyo. I have no idea what he was attempting to do, and I almost felt bad actually attacking him. But I knew that if I didn't attack him and just let him walk around, he would probably go and just slightly damage the farms, which unfortunately entirely removes the bonuses from having those farms, the economic bonuses, and causes public order problems. So really, I can't be allowing even a single weak enemy regiment wandering around. The other upside to defeating them is that Kodama levels up. Excellent news. So yes, the plan with Kodama is to defend against potential attacks from the north and east, which I am still convinced are going to come. So I'm not really willing to abandon North Shinano fully quite yet. It's just going to be Tananao leaving for now. Now the issue to sort out in Etchu is that the Sado forces who landed a while ago are moving straight into Hida just like the last Sado army to attack did. And Takemichi is going to have to chase them down and challenge them to battle just like he did last time. The Sado army is quite well balanced. Again, just like their previous army, it seems the Sado have an ability to produce well balanced armies unlike many of the other clans. You can see it's a nice mix of cavalry, melee forces and line infantry. Some sort of weird line infantry, but still uh, actually in theory more powerful than ours, but ours are more trained and have superior weaponry, so we actually do have the line battling advantage. So let's head down to the battlefield and see what Takamiji can do about these forces. I am here for two reasons. First, I need to pay my respects to the fallen warriors of our clan. This I have already done at length. Second, I need to find a way to escape my disgrace. The Nagoka have been blighted in the eyes of the Shogun. He sets his own dogs on us as if we were a bunch of lowly rebels like you. Our family has destroyed our own legacy. Our attack on North Shinano was the last chance to redeem ourselves, but it seems the flow of history would take us elsewhere. So, now that I have found you, I must make a diplomatic request. Have your men gun me down. I must join my brothers. Takamichi is taking up position on this hill. We deployed slightly behind it, so I had to start off by running up the hill and then taking up a position on the face, looking out over the enemy's advance, which is currently right on the other side of the map. In range of artillery already though, but unfortunately there's a slight hill blocking the artillery's line of sight, so we can't see the majority of the enemy's army from the artillery position at the moment. So for now they're just firing at these flanking units that are coming around the side of the hill and these cavalry, and firing extremely inaccurately as you can see, not actually getting any casualties for now. So let's have a quick look at Takamichi's formation. It's a standard line infantry line right in the front, and behind it we have a few groups of melee units who themselves are mostly behind sharpshooters, the sharpshooters forming a second line to look out over the top of our line infantry for when the enemy line battle gets started. I also have some extra melee infantry coming in as reinforcements as well as these two regiments of cavalry. Those guys are going onto the right flank. The melee units are going to form up behind the rest of the army, ready to charge down the hill if needs be. But before any of that, it's the artillery phase of the battle. I'm now just putting some shrapnel on some of the enemy regiments who've come into proper view. Not taking extreme casualties like we've seen before with shrapnel, because their formation isn't particularly conductive to being killed by shrapnel shot, but still going to reduce their numbers a fair bit. We've made a nice pile of bodies, especially among their doshin here, who have uh, been left behind from the rest of the formation. So the enemy must now advance under that artillery fire and regular artillery fire until they get close to our line, which will take a while. I noticed they were mostly looking like they were going to attack our right flank, so I decided to make a forward echelon on the left so I could get more fire on the enemy's approaching army. So these men now stand waiting, watching the enemy army coming in and taking some uh, fairly inaccurate artillery fire. The occasional hit, reducing the enemy's forces, but actually in this battle, artillery wasn't really the deciding factor. The majority of the enemy's army made it to the actual battle. Now you can see the enemy have put tons of cavalry on their left flank, now attacking up the hill. They have so many cavalry that my own gunmen won't be able to take them down before they arrive. However, you'll remember I had those two regiments of my own cav who I put on the right flank, who are now going to be deployed in to just bog down the enemy's horsemen and stop them from charging my line. I get most of them, just an enemy officer gets past and he routes because he takes so many casualties from gunfire going up the hill. So the enemy cav are now bogged down by my cav, however the enemy spearmen are rushing up so I can't hang around for long. They've got more cavalry coming in to attack my left flank, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, move out my own cavalry to stop them. At the same time the enemy's horsemen are taking the stream gunfire, their losses are pretty heavy, I'll take friendly fire there as well, but not enough to uh, justify not doing it. 
So now the main line battle is beginning. Takamichi Force is completely unloading on the enemy formation. You can see on the minimap in the top right, the enemy's line isn't anything special. They've just got odd units here and there. And we've got a proper line, much more orderly. Here on our right flank, my cavalry have had to pull back because enemy spears are getting in there and beginning to engage them in melee. Looks like the spears are going to chase them. I really wanted to get rid of these spears so that I can free up my cavalry to go around and attack the enemy's line infantry from behind. So I charged out firstly some Naginata levy, but they're not enough to stop the enemy's Doshin regiment. So I backed them up with some Kisho Ninja elite melee units. So combined with the uh, low strength Naginata levy, I'm hoping they'll be able to wipe out these uh, fairly high class enemy spears. They're not really ideal actually for fighting in a prolonged melee, these Kyushu Ninja, so they are going to take some losses. They probably lost around 10 of their 45 men fighting this engagement, but the enemy will lose far more, so it's all fine. That means my cavalry are now free to go and attack the enemy's main troops back here, and they're going to do that with uh, complete impunity because the enemy are just ignoring them now. They've also got these regiments who are marching up the hill. This is because I actually deployed slightly behind the crest of the hill, or at least these sort of small crests in front of them, meaning the enemy didn't have line of sight on some of the targets they were trying to shoot. And as a result, they started moving their units way up the hill to go and stand at point blank range where they would have line of sight. But then they just took fire from uh, guys Victory further along the hill, sir. taking flanking fire and pretty much destroying them. So they just wasted those units, broke up their own line for nothing. And now the line's being even more broken up by these cavalry, wiping out these rifle attendants. The enemy have pretty much crumbled at this point, just a few fleeing units being taken out. The last unit alive was the Doshin fighting in melee against the uh, levies and ninjas, and now they retreat as well. It's pretty much all over for the enemy forces, it's a chain route. Any surviving forces fighting in the line battling simply fall back without taking any particular casualties. I think the actual line battle didn't really go either way. We didn't lose any men, they didn't lose any men in terms of the shooting up and down the hill. But those melee actions are on the flanks, wiped them out, destroyed their morale, and as a result of their entire army shattering, they're going to lose all of their troops. So excellent news, Takamichi has wiped out the Slayer threat for the second time. We lost a couple of hundred men, mostly amongst our melee units and the cavalry. The cavalry actually took a little bit of a beating fighting as they did against the enemy's cavalry. But still, we've gotten rid of that army, the area is now totally safe, and Takamichi is freed up to go and do other things. The main thing I had in mind for him was to move northeast and attack Echigo, the Nagoka stronghold. The only thing that might stop me from doing that is if more naval invasions come down into Echu. But I'm fairly confident that if I take Echigo, the enemy's naval invasions will then land there instead because that's closer to uh, where the majority of them are coming from lands, which is the Edo and uh, Sado lands to the northeast. Now it's time for Anagakoji Yoshiyuji to finally get some true action. I decided to just attack the castle at Suruga. It's pretty heavily defended and you can see there's also an enemy reinforcement group on the way to the northwest. I realized that if I attack now I would take heavy casualties, but if I just lay siege to the castle and bring up reinforcements, the enemy's men will arrive sooner and will probably sally out and mean I have to fight a disadvantageous field battle. But then I realized I can take a third option that might be better than both of those two. Simply ignore the castle for now and go after the small detachment, try and eliminate it with, without taking any losses to myself, and then come back to the castle to focus on it and perhaps siege it. The question in my mind though was, does the enemy have another stack at Kai? Because if they did, chasing this small enemy army north could be a little bit of a problem. There could be guys coming down from the fog of war that I can't see, and Anikakoji Yoshiyuji could get stuck in a situation where I can't rescue him because I simply have no forces coming up to back him up at the moment he is on his own. So I'm looking around here for an agent who I can send into Kai to find out what's going on. There are a number of uh, candidates, most of them are foreign veterans though. I finally found this shinobi I have in North Shinano, absolutely perfect. He's going to sneak down and we'll see what the guys have in Kai. And as he arrives, it turns out they don't have anything at all. It's just that one regiment of troops hanging around. Extremely good news. This gives me a lot of freedom to just move and attack this small group, knowing that nothing's probably going to come of it. The worst thing that can happen is the army from Suruga moves up and attacks Yoshiyuji's group before I defeat this, en this enemy army. And I thought that could happen, but then I realized I could just attack it without my artillery. Still have a massive advantage. The artillery joins the battle as reinforcements anyway. So we're going to wipe this small group off the map. 
those regiments are gone, meaning the Sunpu are pretty much down to that one stack they have in Suruga, which Yoshiyuji is going to go up against, and we're probably uh, slightly better than them in a straight field battle, so I want to try and tempt them out of the castle if I can. More good news, Anakoji Yoshiyuji levels up as a result of destroying that small stack. He hasn't had much action, so he's only just reached level 2. Perhaps he'll get more action now that he's right on the front line. Young Master Tadanao, or General Tadanao, I should say, I write to inform you that we have cleared out the Shogunal forces of Kai. I leave the occupation of the region to you, for our Lord has entrusted me with destroying the enemy main force at Suriga. You and your men have truly achieved great things, but I have noticed you have yet to use your achievement to its fullest. Remember what I told you about Takayuki and his ambitions. You mustn't let his delusion cloud your young mind. Even if our revolution succeeds, the people will demand their emperor soon enough. Do not ruin that hope for them. This new intelligence about Kai gives me the confidence to move Tananao right up to the border. He can't attack now and he can't even attack in the next turn due to lack of movement points. I need to have him hang around anyway to regenerate a few troops before he goes out on expeditions, but soon enough he'll have a chance to attack the weak state of Kai. Now I've got some new intelligence also about the situation near Harima. I discovered this Satsuma navy which appears to be carrying, carrying sorry, a full stack of troops and those troops are led by a five-star general leading me to believe that this is their main force. It's probably a veteran army that is high level and has fought many battles and it's probably on the way. I don't know where it's planning to go of course but it's something to worry about. I've also recently discovered there's loads of these smaller stacks hanging around ready to attack in the west and of course the Yonago invasion of Tamba looks like it's about to reach its peak so overall it looks like imperial forces are across the board planning to start putting some pressure on us which they haven't really done so far now one response i'm going to make is i'm taking takahisa from his role as a reserve army hanging around in the middle of our domain and i'm going to push him out to start moving up a channel through wakasa and perhaps into tango province to see what he can do Moving on, the Satsuma Navy lands at the ports in Harima and dumps off a load of agents. At first I thought that's all they were doing, but later in their own turn, they move the navy out of port, along the coast, and then dump the army into a hidden position in a forest. I have no idea which province they're going for, of course, but it seems something's about to go down near Harima. The Yonago lay siege to Tamba province, but they don't attack, and the Takasuki fall back to their castle at Awaji, so at least they're not going to threaten Harima. Now the Sunpu send a geisha to go and attempt to enchant the two regiments of parrot guns hanging around near Yoshiyuji's forces. Luckily, they fail. Then they send the one regiment they have guarding Kai up north. I guess they didn't know about Tananao's force. Tananao manages to ambush this single regiment. And we're going to take this opportunity to further weaken the Sunpu. That's going to make it even easier for us to take Kai, one less regiment to worry about. And even better news, Talanao levels up as a result of defeating that regiment. So it was very kind of the Sunpu to feed me that experience. Thank you very much. But then their main force at Suruga rushes out and attacks the two parrot guns. I bet they thought they were going to win a sure victory. But Yoshiyuji's army in hiding appears from the forest to reinforce, meaning that actually it's going to be a balanced fight. If I can link up Yoshiyuji with his parrot guns and set up a nice defensive position the enemy will have no choice but to break upon my lines and with any luck I can rout them entirely and then of course the capturing of Suruga and the defeat of the Sunpu clan will be within reach it's a dark and dingy battlefield and it's raining a situation that suits the enemy much more than it does us to begin with i have only my parrot guns deployed but you can see the entire map is covered in trees which obstructs the line of sight of these parrot guns and some of the shells hit trees before they reach their targets which reduces the effectiveness of artillery overall However, I still managed to get some shrapnel shot off in the beginning, dealing some pretty significant casualties to a couple of the regiments who get hit by that shrapnel. The enemy too have plenty of their own artillery, and of course they're going to have the same problem as I have, the trees are going to block both sides. So overall, this battle isn't going to be decided so much by artillery like a lot of previous battles have. So my first priority is to bring in all of the reinforcements and get them set up on the hill with a formation ready to receive the enemy's attack. The enemy are charging right at us. They have an army that is most suited to a frontal assault using melee units, so they're going to rush in, try and hope that the rain impairs my ability to gun them down as they come in and engage me in melee. I have a few of my own melee units who I'm putting behind my main firing line, ready to charge out once the enemy get close. 
Here are some of the enemy's artillery pieces that I mentioned. They have absolutely loads of these six pounder light guns. Now, even though they have quite a lot of them, I wasn't too worried because six pounder light guns are very inaccurate and they can't arc very high when they fire, which means the trees are really, really blocking their line of sight. They can't fire over the top of them, which means most of these guys, even though it says they're firing on the tooltip, they're not actually doing anything because their line of sight is blocked by these trees. So the enemy's artillery advantage has been pretty much knocked out entirely which is absolutely perfect. Now a little bit later the enemy are making their way up the small hill towards my line, <laughs> stopping to cheer, taking more bullets in the process. You can see they're leading with their melee units who of course are being gradually sniped by my guys, not as much as they would be if it wasn't raining, but still the uh, rate of fire is pretty good, especially because my men are highly trained. Here on my right flank we have some US Marines in the line who will be firing extremely quickly and extremely accurately at the enemy's advancing forces, but you can see they don't really have proper line of sight. So in some ways, the poor line of sight is being countered by my good accuracy, meaning that overall it's just an average attack we're making on the enemy's front line. The enemy's cavalry advanced to try and attack our main line. A good move, but of course I can charge up my spears to receive them. We stop their general and then we stop these light cavalry with ease. They're going to be cut down in combat with the spearmen. The problem is that the enemy's heavy melee infantry are then going to come in and engage the spearmen, which could be problematic. Now you can see I formed an echelon on my left flank, advancing around the enemy's flank. The enemy turned to charge it, I realised that they would probably reach it quite easily and break through, so I charged down some reserve spears to meet the enemy's ronin, and this actually went way better than I thought it would. I assumed the ronin would simply cut through my spears and continue their charge, but in fact my spears did the opposite, we pushed the ronin right back, and now I've got them locked in combat. I was really hoping these gunmen would fire into the flanks of the enemy units, but you can see they're kind of busy just standing around, not really doing anything. Carbine infantry do have a tendency to glitch out. These line infantry aren't doing any better, any, uh, actually. A few of the enemy's artillery shells are now finally coming in, so they've been moving their artillery around and have finally found a bit of line of sight. We still don't have proper line of sight over the enemy's infantry, but many of them are now falling back after spending a little time engaging with our melee forces. I'm pulling the melee forces back where I can to get them out of the way so that my guys can just pursue by fire the remaining enemy soldiers. I'm not really bothered about chasing them. As long as they shatter and don't look like they're going to come back, I'm not going to bother slaughtering them. Some of the enemy's line infantry are still fighting with us, but of course their line infantry have the same downsides as mine because of the terrain and the weather, so nothing's really going to happen on that front. They'll fall back soon enough. Now while all this was going on, I've got these cavalry to go right around the enemy's army and take out their artillery. They didn't really leave anything behind to protect these artillery pieces, so they are going to be really at the mercy of these cavalry. We've got quite a lot of them, that's the only advantage. It's going to take me a while to take them all out, but slowly but surely, they're going down. I do have this one unit of Doshin chasing down some enemy units. I was trying to use this unit to get around the back of the enemy army and then attack their line infantry from behind, but the line infantry routed before I could get in a position to do that just from taking the gradual fire from my line, especially the sharpshooters who are slightly behind my line who fare better in this uh, poor weather and with the difficult line of sight. So a little bit later on we've destroyed all of their artillery, one unit of parrot guns remained but I hit them with some shrapnel shot and that caused them to rout so in the end it was a decisive victory. Our line was very much unviolated by the enemy forces, just a little bit of light line battling was the only real source of casualties plus casualties among the men sent out to fight in Malay. But clearly it wasn't enough, the Sumpu forces are really on the back foot now, they're pretty much doomed. Noble lords of the Sumpu Domain, for too long have our messages gone ignored, and now the price for this mistake has been paid. You have learned the same lesson learned a hundred times over, that the Sioux cannot be resisted by military force. If you truly wish to stop the revolution, stop the changes the Sioux are bringing, then it is not by means of war you will succeed. The Sioux doctrine is a manifestation of the people's will. To change the doctrine you must first win the support of the people. This bloody and futile war does nothing to achieve that goal. Simply put, the only way forward from here is surrender. Here are the battle results. You can see we lost about 250 men, the enemy losing over 2,000, and we also captured three regiments of those light guns that I was so lampooning in the battle. Well, they'll perhaps come to some use as the siege of Sudaga is about to take place, and having artillery is of course going to be useful for that. 
So the Sumpu are pretty much gone, let's move on into the next turn. I had a whole bunch of bad news I had to hack through. One piece in particular is that one of my agents has been wounded over in Harima. If I hack through the rest of this bad news, I'll be able to see what it's actually talking about. Quite a lot of bad news today. The good news though is that it's now summer, which improves the replenishment rate of troops, meaning campaigning is a little bit easier. The agent in question is this enemy ninja who has taken out one of my foreign veterans who was training Takeyuki's forces. Luckily it was only a wound. Luckily I also had a ninja hanging around in the same province. I wanted to take some revenge by attempting to assassinate the enemy's ninja. You might also have noticed that the enemy Ishinishi who was sitting next to the province was attempting to incite a rebellion but luckily failed. We managed to wound that ninja but uh, he'll be back but so will our veteran so both sides didn't really lose anything in this uh, tit-for-tat agent engagement. Now we've got the Satsuma army to worry about. It's sitting on the coast. It looks pretty good. It's got some high-level units and with upgrades, as I suspected it might. So the question is, is it going to go for Harima or is it going to go for Setsu? I suspected it was going to go for Setsu just because it's facing that direction. But I'm still going to prepare for the situation where it might go for Harima by preparing some defenses here. What I'm going to do is uh, try and pull as many units out of the castle that I don't need to be in there during a siege assault, uh, just so they can come in as reinforcements instead and I'll spawn garrison units to replace them essentially increasing the size of my army without having to do anything and i'm also going to put those guys behind the castle trying to be off angle from the enemy's attack direction so they don't get attacked as they make their way towards the castle once the battle starts but of course if they attack setsu that would also be a problem and all of those preparations won't have helped at all but luckily i had a reinforcement army currently moving up to support tagiyuki who is about to arrive in setsu so i can simply continue to move them up the enemy will take at least two turns to reach setsu so i'll easily have time to, pre to prepare defenses there if that is their target so it's all good stuff now back over in Suruga, it's time to seal the deal. I decided to move Yoshiyuji's forces up to besiege the castle. The balance bar wasn't hugely in our favor, so I didn't want to do a quick auto resolve and suffer casualties, especially because I don't expect anyone to come and reinforce this castle. So I'll simply wait until next turn, then I can move up all of those artillery pieces to support the attack, and I'll have a much better time. The Simpu are also on the back foot in Kai and it's time for me to press that advantage. Tanner now is going to leave all of his artillery behind to give himself enough movement points to strike right from the border all the way to the capital of Kai and we'll go right into the attack. The balance bar was sufficiently in my favour this time that I was comfortable just letting the auto resolve decide the result and we're not going to take that many casualties. Tanner now does need to hang around and replenish troops anyway because you can see he's not even at full strength. It was a very acceptable battle, a heroic victory in fact from the auto resolve, better than expected. Kai is captured, meaning the Sunbu are now completely on the edge. I'm going to repair the castle and then start thinking about what Tananao can do next with these forces. I don't really need him to go down to help the attack on Surugath. I have this shinobi who I can use to expand the line of sight from Kai. I can see the Odoara clan have a heavily fortified position to the southeast and there's not much else actually coming in to attack me. So it looks pretty safe. I might be able to continue my offensive and take even more lands, hopefully going towards Masashi, the shogunate capital. So that's all for now. We'll be resisting Imperial invasion and trying to press our advantage against the Shogunate next time on Teba Republic.